because this is good right here. This is uh, our trip to Mount Spokane yesterday. Okay. We're talking about living colors, uh, which is a, a great chance and lots of fun to use naturally occurring pigments to paint with. Uh, and you don't have to be some, you know, uh, accomplished artist. Uh, the, the kit that we, we have has uh, stencils in it that you can use to, to create. In fact, here's a rose uh, that I just did with, this was with a rose petal and a stencil. And then the stencil is outlined in charcoal, just to give you an idea of, of some of the things that can be done. Uh, this is my daughter Teresa's first attempt at using living colors. And she's used a number of, of our uh, treasures from our trip yesterday up to Mount Spokane. And uh, in fact, uh, we'll show you some of, the, some of the items that we collected up there. These are uh, Oregon grape, and they produce a bluish purple. Uh, these are huckleberries and kind of a reddish, reddish purple. And one berry, let me just show you how what one berry does. By the way, uh, these are called magic wands. A magic wand, uh, there's a, a different colored magic wand for each family of colors that you would typically use while you're making a painting. Uh, anything red, and the reason for this is, uh, let's just say I, I use this little red rose here to, to create some color. I'll show you. Uh, so we use red, and some reds and like that turns into kind of a, a purple, but that's okay uh, because it's kind of like experimenting with all the available flowers to see what colors you can create. Now I'll show you what happens when uh, when you when I use this rose. Again, I'm using the, the red magic wand, and to explain how that works. This wand has a real sharp point on this edge. It has like Velcro uh, on on uh, one edge to hold a flower. You just touch the flower with it, and it sticks to it. And then you use it like it's a crayon, a color crayon. Look at the flower. Look at the color that we're imparting onto this paper. Uh, and then, if you're wanting to make grass, you use. Uh, the bottom of the magic wand and it gives you a grass shape by simply moving it upward on the paper so you can see that's kind of like a lawn and on the other side of the magic wand there's deep serrations and that gives you uh, more of a reeds like reeds and bushes like there and then if you want to put a flower on top of each one, let's say you want to turn all those into flowers, uh, you can use the point of the magic wand and just touch the top of each one of these. looks like grass uh, with color, like I'm doing. And uh, there becomes a patch of flowers. Let me get something a little bit better. Here we go. You can go like this. Yeah. So that's an example of, of putting coloring on. Now, we found out that it really works well. Uh, let's say we think this is a butterfly. So we outline its wings in charcoal. Maybe put out some feelers out here. And there's your butterfly. Made of one color and a little bit of charcoal. I can't remember, did you get that already? Mm -hmm. And so... Max, you doing your 11 year old boy here doing mountaintop? Well, that's good. Oh, and here's a... This is an earlier one that, that Teresa did. Uh, using the green, these are huckleberry leaves that he made the green trees with. And the clouds, we have uh, wax in the kit that uh, allows you to uh, go onto a page and Put down a covering of wax. In fact, let me do it on a clean page here. Say we want to draw a cloud, and then then you do, if you draw the sky next, let's say with a huckleberry, you 
it will not stick to where the wax is and so you can see where your cloud your where you draw, drew your cloud See that white that's left there? Good. That's the that's the cloud. The rest of the sky is, is all colored in. If this was blue, it would be looking like a blue sky. But then there's your clouds. And if you want, you can go into your cloud with charcoal and outline it. Keep going. I guess I I guess that yeah, you can see. Just to give a little more depth. 